This is the third example of how to use the offset formula and how can you can use it really creatively to get loads of work done uh, in Excel. So in the third example, we're going to look at how to combine the offset formula uh, with a chart to create uh, what I call a dynamic chart. Okay, what do we mean by a dynamic chart? Well, charts are great in Excel, bring a really strong visual element. Um, but they also present a kind of presentational issue, okay, because they take up a lot of room. And if your spreadsheet has a lot of charts and the user is having to do a lot of scrolling, particularly horizontal scrolling, you know, it can be very onerous for the user and very quick, quickly the spreadsheet becomes uh, difficult to use. So with that in mind, uh, dynamic charts allow us to make the most of the space we've got by quickly changing the data that's displayed in the chart. Okay, really nice feature. I find that clients absolutely love this. Okay, so for example, this chart here, I've just hit UK. So this is now showing all the views from the UK for the Tiger YouTube channel in quarter two. Uh, change that to, to India. You can see that the chart updates straight away and to Brazil, the chart updates straight, straight away. So you've got that instant update, uh, really nice feature. So how do we do that? Well, we're doing that using uh, the offset formula. And the offset formula is telling the chart, or rather telling the table that the chart is connected to, uh, which data to look at. So you can see at the bottom, we've got two tables. What's actually happening is that this table and the chart refers to this table. Um, this table contains formulae, so it doesn't contain data, contains uh, formulae, offset formulae, and the offset formulae is pointing to one of the rows in this table, okay? And which row it's pointing to is determined by the user input at the top, okay? And as I showed, when the user changes the input, the offset formulae updates, which means that the chart updates as well. So that's how it's working. Sounds really complicated, um, but it's really fairly straightforward, okay? So just uh, download the practice file, practice yourself, Follow along with me and you'll have you'll be able to do dynamic charts uh, before the end of the video. OK, so I'm going to uh, delete the offset formulae. So our, our chart has disappeared because the data has disappeared and uh, we're going to go through how we would build it. OK, so. As you can see in the in, in the table, there's three columns of data. Uh, that we want to display in the chart, okay? So three columns of data, that means we're going to need three offset formulae because each offset formula is gonna pull through one piece of data, okay? So that's the first point uh, to mention. Uh, when you set up the offset formulae, the structure, the layout that you use should replicate what's going on in the table because you want one off offset formula for each uh, column or row, whatever you're doing in the table. Okay, so I've replicated the format in the table. And then I want to pull through, I want to pull through, in this column, I want to pull through the Q2 information. Okay, so as always with uh, offset, it's asking for a reference point first. So an anchor point that it looks at first, it will then move away from that point, a certain number of rows, a certain number of columns. Okay, so the top of the column, uh, looks like the best place uh, to do it. And then I've got to think, how many rows would I move away from that, okay? And bear in mind that we want the data to update as the user changes the country, okay? So there's clearly an additional step I'm going to have to take in order to, uh, to achieve that, okay? So before we get stuck into the offset formula, let's go back to that last step. And we're going to use um, Offset's old friend, uh, which is the match formula. The two combine together beautifully, synergize beautifully to get lots of work done in Excel. We've got a video on how to combine match and offset together, which you can look at as well. Uh, so the match formula tells us how far down or how far across a range of values a particular value is, okay? And in this case, it's telling us that the UK is one row into this column of values, okay? So just to illustrate that, change that to India, and the match formula now says three. That's because India is one, two, three rows into this uh, range of values, okay? 
So that's how it works. I won't go into detail into the, uh, the match formula, but you'll be able to see that uh, in the download file. And we have videos on the match formula too. Okay. So now we have that number, the number that shows us how far down the column a particular uh, value is. We can incorporate that into the offset formula to tell us how many rows we need to move down. Okay, that will link it all up dynamically. You know, don't worry if it doesn't make sense. Let's have a go at it now. Okay. So offset, again, my uh, reference points, um, the top of this column, comma. So the formula is asking for the next element. And this is where we're going to make reference uh, to the match formula up here. Okay, because that tells us how far down the table the country that we're looking at is. Okay, I'm going to fix that reference using the F4 key because I'm going to use the same cell reference in other formulae, comma, asking for the next uh, element of the formula. So how many columns to move across? Well, yeah, we do have columns in the table, but we're going to have one formula for each column. So we don't need to move any columns across. I can just put a zero in there. And in this case, we just want to return a value from a single cell. So we don't need to worry about the height and width elements, which we do need to worry about if we're trying to reference a range of cells. Just referencing a single cell only need the first three elements, okay? So I can close that formula down. It's giving me 227. So it's saying for India, Q2, 227. So that seems to be right. Just going to test it. Let's try Brazil. Brazil has given me 99. Okay, seems to be working fine. So that formula... Uh, seems to be working okay, so I can copy it across, Control c and then I'm going to select the range where I want to put the formula, paste special, Control alt v and then F is going to allow me to just paste in the formulas and not the other, um, not the formatting or any other elements uh, that I might want to paste in. Okay, so the formulas come across there. Again, let's do some testing. So we've got Brazil, Q4, 150, looks okay. Let's change this, UK, Q3, 699, UK, Q3, 699, okay? So it seems to be working uh, really well. So once more, let's test it. Uh, India, we can see the data's come through. Yeah, seems to be working really nicely, and that's your dynamic chart, okay? It's just to revise the main points there. So it's another illustration of combining different formulae together uh, to get work done. So I always think one formula gets a little bit done, but the benefits are exponential as you combine uh, two formula or maybe three formulae together, um, you get, you know, more and more benefit. Okay. And here's a good example of getting, you know, a dramatic about a benefit just from combining two formulae together. Okay. So we combine offset with match. Match tells us how far down this column um, the country name is. And then we can use the value from match in the offset formula to tell the formula how far to move away from our reference point. And it's then going to get to that cell and return the value in that cell. OK, in this case, Q2, 99. And that's because the value is Brazil. OK, and then the chart, just go to select data and the chart you can see um, always points to this table. OK. So you could uh, make this make this reference dynamic, but that's that, that's more difficult to do. That's more in, that's more intricate. It's much easier to just make the table, uh, the data that appears in the table dynamic, because it's easier to put the formulae in cells than it is to put in the dialog box, the select data dialog box. OK, other things to bear in mind. Obviously, the user might not want to see this match formula. Yeah. So you could very easily park that uh, on a different sheet or make it hidden in some way. And it may even be the same uh, with this table, because this table is a bit of a repetition of another table next to it. So you may want to hide that on a different sheet. And as long as you make sure the references line up, that's going to be OK. Yeah. So that's the third of three examples on the Excel offset formula. Um, I always think it's a formula that doesn't really get a lot of recognition from Excel users or people who are trying to uh, learn Excel. We've looked at three really nice applications, creative applications that will allow you to get a lot of work done and will hopefully impress um, you know, your classmates, your, uh, your, your clients, your colleagues, whoever you're looking to impress. So I hope this series has inspired you to have a little bit more love for the offset formula. See you soon.